So glad to have you with me today. I'm, I'm so excited about sp sharing with you from this uh, chapter of Ezekiel 36 because uh, this book has, uh, this particular chapter has ministered to me so many times through the years and I go back to it. And, and so it's interesting that today we're at that and we're getting ready to um, go into a new season here. And, um, and even though we're in, in summer, summer, we're really hitting summer now. Now we're in fully into summer here in Florida. And, um, but I want to just encourage you as before we get started, I, I brought this out this uh, today to look at it. Um, uh, back every year, um, I think I, and I've shared with some of you on other, other times, but the, I've been using this, um, journal type journal for a lot of years about 20 years it's a wonderful it's by uh, Google publishing and I really like the way that they have it set up it's it's a not it's a secular but the way that it is it is nice 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 and and so what I do every year is I ask the Lord um, again God moves with us in seasons there's seasons uh, of our lives there's seasons of places that he sends you to there's places that all of a sudden you're one place and he says okay i've called you to do this sometimes he'll say okay I, you did this now i'm calling you out and and we've seen some seasons uh since we're a little older than we were <laughs> when we began this is our 30th uh, year of and our 30th wedding uh, year of marriage and so we've this is our we're going into our third you know, our third decade together, which it's just it's hard to believe. Anyway, um, so wonderful to be married to my precious husband. And, and uh, but anyway, so for so probably for about 20 years, I uh, have kept these type of journals and I like it because it's got the number of what year it is. And I know you, a lot of you use your computers and that sort of thing, but I just like that I see things in my own writing. Uh, I have, it gives a, a, a a, a schedule for the beginning of each month. I keep track of where I've attended, where I've been, what cities I've been in, um, different seeds that I've sown. I, it's a seed log for me as well. Um, I also use this, uh, I put dreams in it, um, and I and I have at the front, I, I have started over the last 10 years, I collect um, all, I keep a record of all the dreams that I've had for that year in the front of it so that I can go back and see by year kind of a synopsis of the things that the visions and dreams and things that he's given me for the year and so if you uh you know if you are, haven't done this before I again it's I, I don't spend two hours journaling every day it's um I'm in the word I'm I'm spending time in prayer um, I, but I do have time to a lot of times just write down the scripture where I'm meditating. Of course, right now where I'm going through Ezekiel, of course, I've got, I'm going through, I'm focusing on those scriptures or uh, the book of Ezekiel for this month. We'll be finishing it up in a couple days. Anyway, so I brought this out to, for you today because, um, back in 2013, actually kind of the way it is that at the, uh, my new season begins around the end of August in September for me, uh, probably part of it too is it is the Jewish New Year but uh, or yeah anyway and so what ends up happening is I end up um, I uh, have the come away which I will have in August and which we get a new word and usually around that same time this is my season this is how it works with me I usually usually give me the new scripture for the next year and so I got this at the end of of 2012 when I was in Vero and um, and for me to have to have Ezekiel uh, 36 for that year 2012 to 2013 in that time frame the Lord moved us out of the completely out of Vero we sold all the furniture in the home that we had there and um, and he moved us back here we stopped having meetings in the church that we had over there and a lot of things changed and so as he gave me that closure of leaving that eat that season i'm always looking to the word so he had given me ezekiel 11 when we went there initially and then he gave me ezekiel 36 
to tell me that we were leaving. And so I, I, this Bible is so alive. This word is a living word and it will speak to you about your season. And you know, Jesus himself said, lo, I come in the volumes of the book to do your will. And so I'm, I find it interesting that we are, I'm back here in Ezekiel this year. And, um, and I'm so, it's so interesting to see sometimes a backward glance. I remember Pastor Lloyd said this years ago when uh, we went to uh, school there at, at the Countryside Christian Center Academy, and they had a, a, a school, a college, a ministerial college. So when we went there, one of the script classes that we took was vision enlargement. And one of the things that Pastor Kevin, uh, I'm sorry, Pastor Lloyd said, taught on, he taught the class. And one of the things that he talked about was that the, the, the way to see your future is by a backward glance. And so um, I always... I took hold of that, and so I like to look back and see, because sometimes the things are moving so quickly in the spirit, so many things are going on, that we don't have time to take time to really reflect on, not even just this month, like I try to, I, I'll show you, like, I go back to where I am in in each, you know, I go back and I can see where I was, what I was doing, seeds that I sowed. See, I'm still using this as 22, 2022. Uh, I use this and I still go back to record where I, where I was, seeds I've sown in this year, new things that we began. And so God is always on the increase with you. And, but sometimes you're so busy going forward or you're in an attack that's coming to get your family that you don't even see the progress that you're moving forward in and part of the things that are happening to you are coming against where you're going because you're taking ground and so um so i encourage you so for me i'm getting this word and it's a promise of restoration even though we closed everything up there and we're leaving there and uh we it was we're going through the beginning real full-fledged of a, a play a time in our life for probably the next seven years where we weren't going to have any uh cash i mean we only had god provided for me us but we had no credit cards we had no um we 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 had to live by faith and and pastor kevin wrote the book um how to um how to buy without money well we really had to buy without money so the lord had to show us and so i'm leaving this one season and the lord gives me uh is this script passage to ezekiel 36 to, as a promise of even though i'm getting ready to go into this not unbeknownst to us, we're going into the seven-year famine. Unbeknownst to us, the Lord knew. And he gave me Ezekiel 36 of, 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 of a promise of restoration that was going to come. I was looking for it to be right then, but it was a promise that was going to take place. It was just going to be, it wasn't going to be a minute, like the kids say, you know, it was like the kids refer to a minute as a long period of time. For us now, when you have the baby and, and you've gone through it, you know, gosh, you don't really remember all those baby, those pangs. But again, when we were, when we left that area, there were promises that he gave us of restoration and how he was going to restore us back. And so sometimes you're forced to leave a field that you have been sowing in and, and toiling in. And all of a sudden, it's gone. You, you can't move. But God is the watchman over your fields and over what you've sown. And when you have sown the word of God, it will never return back to him empty. Isaiah 55 promises that the word will not return back to him void, but it will prosper in the thing to which he sent it and prosper in the thing to which he he sent it amen and so isaiah 55 is in our church it's a it's a scripture that we stood on i had a it came by vision the lord showed me how to make it 20 something years ago and had i had it commissioned to be done just like the picture behind me when the lord gave me the vision of pastor kevin 20 something years ago uh i had that commission because the lord wanted me to have it as a point of reference because sometimes you've got to have just like like david and we're going to get to ezekiel 36 but just like david when david took um took out um goliath what he did is he took the sword and he put the sword in the house of 
of the priests. Amen. But he took Goliath's army armor and he put it in his tent. The reason that he put the armor in his tent is it was a memorial that he could look to that and remember uh, things that God had done for him. Things that when he, that he, you know, the, the lion had come against him, he took it out. The bear had come against him, he took it out and he took out Goliath. And, and so David used that, uh, that armor as a point of contact for his faith that a memorial of the giant that he had already giants he had already taken out so that when he had those days and all of us have those days that's why a chronicle of you know some keeping track of your dreams keeping track of what god's told you those things um you can go back to when you're having a, a situation of attack. You can go back and the Lord, you, 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 I am just so amazed at when I look back at this, uh, this book from 2013 of the many things that God had us do come. We are getting ready to go into famine, but when you're in famine, you still have to sow seed. And so that was the same year that the Lord spoke to me to begin May to Rise. I had a pat, I had no money. I couldn't afford to do that event. That's a, the young girls event that I I started uh, that the Lord spoke to me to do. So I started that made arise that year and God used a pastor to sow because I'm saying, Lord, we have no money to pay for this. And the Lord used a pastor to, to, to give me a check that covered all of my expenses for that first year, for that first event that was at the hotel. And so, and so God supernaturally wanted me to show wanted to show me again that he was going to take care but I needed to continue to keep going forward and sowing keep going forward and giving what I had to give there were there were so many different there's so many different situations even supernatural things that he did for me to confirm he gave me he, I had this luncheon for my mother-in-law's birthday I had all of her friends come and they all gave a word of wisdom to be passed to these to these young girls for that that conference did I have the numbers that I wanted to have I wanted to have who God would send I prayed it was faith and prayer but God sent girls amen and 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 god and and it was a, a again we plant some you get the blade and you get the you know first you see the blade coming up then you see the ear and then you see the full corn and so even though when you you're pulled away out of a field that you've sown into know that the, the lord that god is the lord of the harvest and he is watching over your fields he's watching over those things to protect and to keep that you sow to, even if you have to go away for several years, he can keep those things that he's earmarked for you to have. Amen. There are times in your children's lives where it looks like, who, where did this alien come from <laughs> that's taken over my child? That was such a cute little baby, you know. But we, we stand because we know that we've given the, them the word of God. We pray for them. We stand and we continue to sow life into them and to speak life of, into them and love them and keep loving them and speaking the word and praying for them, knowing that what we did give them and maybe, maybe you didn't give them that, but God will, you can start giving it to them. Now you can start declaring, decreeing and declaring over your children is so vital. There's a story. I'm, I'm going to get to 30, Ezekiel 36, but there's a story about Kenneth Hagin that he tells. And I really like uh, Kenneth, one of the reasons I really like Kenneth Hagin's teachings is he'll give life examples of times that he prayed for people. Well, this time he was talking about, he was in a prayer, he was in a meeting. And at the end, this lady came up and she wanted him to pray for her son. Well, so he said, well, you know, so she starts to tell him how all these things about her son and how horrible her son was and all, all this. And she, he said, ma'am, I will not pray for you because your words are going to dig up anything that I would pray because you have the ultimate authority because you are the mother and you are speaking, you are speaking death over your son. So I am not going to pray for your son. Would you, how many times have you seen a pastor do that anymore? I mean, really, but that was true. What he was doing is he understood that even though she was in that meeting, she had the, she had more authority over that child's life by what she was speaking and what she was declare, declaring and decreeing over that child. And so sometimes it could be that way of your, your, you know, the Bible says in, in, in uh, Malachi, your words have been stout against me. You say that you want this to happen in your life. You say you want your children to be blessed. You say you want your marriage restored. 
but your words are stout. Your words are totally against it. So, so again, if you have, and so even when you don't see, a, you don't see the, how these words could possibly come to pass. I know that they will come to pass. I'm seeing the results of, of, of Ezekiel 36 now, right now. Uh, le 10 years later, I'm seeing the restoration of those things that were in that city that we sowed. Though, you know, it didn't look, he, except for a lot of times he would give me many rocks. He gave me these heart rocks every time I would go and walk on the beach, no, letting me know that he was in fact changing hearts of people. Though I didn't see him in the building, though I didn't see it in the natural, but by faith, he wanted me a pit, a, a, a rock, he wanted me to see that that another stony heart had been changed, another stony, he was doing a work, amen, and so I encourage you, if you don't ask the Lord, he's not a respecter of person, what's the scripture you have, the, the, the key scripture you have for me for the new year, as like I said, mine starts at the end of, excuse me, Usually I get mine at the end of August for the next year. And um, right now he gave me Psalm 126 for this year. So I keep going back to that. And I'm expecting to be having my sheaves in my hand this year. And you know what? God is showing me sheaves. He's... he's He's given me eyes to see sheep. See, see, it's not houses and lands and diamonds and cars or any of those things. These are the eternal things. Uh, family restored, uh, relationships restored, people getting saved, people getting truly delivered, people being restored back to you that were cut off or even cut, they just said they'll never speak to you again or whatever, they're, they're eternal things because people are the only thing that we can take to heaven, our souls, really. And um, anyway, so all, all that being said, I'm going to just read to you from Isaiah, uh, from Ezekiel 36. I keep saying Isaiah because I love Isaiah too. And so I'm going to just give you what he gave me. This is back in 20, 2012 instead of my outline, but most of them are in also highlighted for us to talk about today. And so maybe there'll be one or two of these scriptures. You say, I'm going to start declaring that. I'm going to start expecting God. See, God, he never, he never prunes you back. To take you out, he prunes us so that we will grow, we will bear more excellent fruit. But you've got to get your believe, believer back. You've got to get your believer, <laughs> believer. You've got to get believing again. Amen. You've got to start because just like he cut off Israel for their unbelief, he can cut off it, us as the that that have been grafted in because the same reason for unbelief. So if it's in the B I B L E, you don't want to be against it, okay? Even if you don't understand it, even if your church doctrine doesn't teach it, you don't want to say no, I don't believe that. And so and and again, you can say, you know, she's taken all that out of context. How she, who is she to say that that's going to be hers? But you know what? The this Bible is a book of seed. And you can have it and you can plant it. And what you plant is going to grow up. Um, but if I want to grow watermelon, I've got to put watermelon seed. If I need healing, I plant healing seeds. Amen. And the Lord's dealing with me and speaking to me about how how to how to bring that that healing teaching on healing for the nation is different than he teaching on healing to an individual. There's a different way. All of healing is coming from Jesus. He is our peace, but he has taken me to a new level of how, how to, that I can see how God has been not only teaching me on healing for my body, healing for my hand, family, but how he is going to heal this land. So that's one of the promises that he's told me that, that I'm going to be a part of, that he's promised me for this nation. So even though there's all these things going on, even those things where people were taken with COVID, people were taken through uh, this violence, such violence in our nation and, and the political things, people were distracted with all these political things, all of those things. Even though people were lost and situations happened, yet God is going to raise up and he is going to heal this land. Amen. And so in, uh, in Ezekiel 36, it says, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, Israel and say, hear the word of the Lord. And I'm, you're a mountain for the Lord. Okay. So hear the word of the Lord. Uh, it, because the enemy has said, aha. Even the ancient places are in ours in possession. And they prophesy and they say that, that they made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side. 
that you might be a possession and a residue, uh, uh, and, 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 they, and they've taken up the lips of talkers, and that they've even made you to be infamous and, and you know, a fool for God. You did this, and look, you lost everything. You know, that's what the enemy is always going to say, right? Therefore, you mountains of Israel, you hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to us as mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and to the valleys and to desolate wastes and to cities that have been forsaken, which became prey even and a derision to the residue. Even the heathens round about you were making fun of you, didn't they? <laughs> they have, they did us. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against Edom, which had appointed my land to themselves into their possessions with the joy of all their hearts with despiteful minds to cast it out as prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, Thus says the Lord, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy. He's jealous for us and in my fury because you bore the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I've lifted up my hand and surely the heathen that are about you, they will bear their shame. But you, O mountains of Israel, you will shoot your branches and you will yield your fruit to my people of Israel because they are at hand to come. Amen. And for behold, I am for you. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, I will turn unto you and you will be tilled and we will be tilled and we will be sown. Okay. He is using us. People will eat us in this hour. So we don't, we can't be moved by the outward things. We have to keep plugging into Jesus, plugging into his word. He says, I will till and I will sow. You shall be tilled and you shall be sown. And I will multiply men upon you, O house of Israel. And even all of, all of it and the cities will be inhabited and the waste will be built up. Amen. The cities of the Lord will be inhabited and the waste places will be built up again. And I will uh, multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and they will bring and they will bear, bring fruit. And this was, is one of my favorite lines. For, uh, uh, just I've been sing, saying this since January. Hallelujah. But he gave it to me all those years back in 2012. It says, and I will settle you. I want you to get this. I will settle you. Uh, I will do, I will settle you after your old estate. And I will do better to you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. Yes, I will even cause men to walk upon you, even people of Israel, they shall possess you and they shall, you shall be their inheritance and you shall no more be bereaved of men. I love that, that they're going to want you. They're going to call you. They're going to say, you're my possession. You're my inheritance. I need you with me because the Lord is with you. Amen. It's not about anything outwardly. And it's all about the light of the glorious gospel shining from the inside out of you that they want you to be with them. And so it says, yes, I will I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they will want to possess you, and they shall be, and you shall be their inheritance, and you shall no more be bereaved of men. Thus says the Lord, verse thirteen, because they say unto you that that thou land devours up men and has bereaved the nations, therefore thou shalt devour men and no more, neither bereave them of men. Neither will I cause men to hear in the the shame of the heathen, isn't this wonderful? No more. Thank you. The shame of the heathen anymore. Neither shall thou cause shall thou cause the nations to fall any more, says the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 17, Son of man, the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, and they even defiled it by their own ways, and their doing and doing of their ways, and be, and it was uncleanness. 
It was an uncleanness to him, like of, of, of the uncleanness of a removed woman. But wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed on the land and their idols, which they had polluted it. And I even did scatter them among the heathens, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. Then I judged them. And they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned, when they profaned my, my holy name. And then they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. But God always has pity on his holy name, which the house of Israel, even when they profane it, you are still his people. Even when your children do wrong, they are still your children. Even when your husband does wrong, he is still your husband as long as you are still married and in covenant. Amen. And verse 22 says, Therefore, say to this house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your own sake, because we've all missed it, O house of Israel, but for my own holy name's sake, which you even profaned among the heathen when you went. If you did wrong things in a place, if you missed it in areas, and the heathen had opportunity to blaspheme God, God says they may do it for a little bit, but I'm going to return. I'm going to I'm going to recover you. I'm going to bring you out because you are mine. Amen. And it says, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, when the uh, which the Lord. <clears throat> when I will be sanctified in you in their eyes, all about getting back to sanctifying the Lord in our hearts, in our homes, and in what we do. When we do that, hallelujah, then God, when you turn, God can start to restore. But until we turn, we, God can't do his part. Till we let go and say, God, I don't understand, you know, why this has all been lost. But I trust you. See, see, the one who sent us to that area, to Vera Beach, was the Lord. He gave us Isaiah 61. And, and only the, the Spirit of the Lord was going to sustain us there. And the Spirit of the Lord, just as the Spirit of the Lord led us there, the Spirit of the Lord led us back for the protection of our family. I mean, the Lord even had given us a hotel that he, he, he had given us a hotel that we could buy without money over on the beach. And, and, uh, it was a hundred room hotel on the ocean and, and, and at that time. And it was in the geographical area that we were called to be in. But the Lord gave us, even though it was, it lined up with the things that we had, uh, in that area yet. The Lord said, no, I need you to go back because it's just good. Uh, this is for the safety of your family. So again, even sometimes when we have these things that line up and look, okay, that looks like great. That's great. But when the Holy Spirit's, when you're grieved, I, I remember the night that we signed the contract with this, these people for the hotel and uh, it, we were supposed to take it over in two months. And, um, and when I left the signing of that, I, I didn't feel good. I, there was no joy. But the Lord is so gracious that he gave us the time to be able to get out of that. And there, there's just no telling what would have happened in um, our lives if we tried to go forward with that hotel at that point. Uh, I, because God didn't have it for us. There was a whole big thing that was getting, re getting ready to crash down. And, and he needed to get us out of that place, even that we sowed, to get us to a safe place to endure that famine, just like he uh, Jacob was told uh, to go to Gerar, you know, and uh, to go to another place. God will say, go someplace so that you can be safe for a season. Let's continue. I'm just going to continue a little bit further here, finish up this uh, Ezekiel 36. So he says, um, verse 23, it says, and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, the Lord, uh, which the Lord uh, among the heathen, which the Lord, when I will be sanctified in you before their eyes, for I will take from among the heathen and gather from all the countries and I will bring you into your own land and I will sprinkle. Is he so good? The God of restoration. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Hallelujah. And you will be clean from all of your, um, all of your filthiness and from the idols from your idols will I cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart, and I will also give you a new spirit. We've got to have a new heart, a new spirit, 
and I will put in you that I will put in you and I will take away that stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers and you shall see over in Vero is where my my, I, I was raised there, so he was talking to me as we were leaving. I'm going to restore you back there. Hallelujah. So trust me, I'm going to restore. He's so faithful. I will restore. Uh, so it's, it's Jerusalem, it's Israel, but it's my home. It's my promised land. It's what God promised me personally of, of, of an inheritance that my father had, has promised me. Amen. And it says, I will multiply I'm sorry, let me go back to verse 28. Uh, and you shall dwell in the land I gave your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I also will save you from all of your uncleanness, and I will start to call for the corn, and it will increase. And I will lay no more famine upon you. I didn't know we were going into famine. I didn't know it. But he says, from now on, I will lay no more famine on you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and I will increase the fruit, the fields, and you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. 31. And then you shall remember your evil ways, your doings that were not good, and you will leave and loathe yourself in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I do this, says the Lord God, be it known to and and be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all of your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in cities. I will give you an enlargement. I will enlarge your borders. When you've gone through this situation, I will enlarge you and I will send you to cities and I will give you ways to be built Amen. And the desolate land shall be tilled, which had laid desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate has now become again the garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced now, and they're inhabited. And then the heathen that are left around you, huh, they shall say, uh, that left around you shall know that I am. In the Lord, amen, he is the Lord that builds the rune places. He is the one that will build that rune place in your life and plant that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I will do it, says the Lord. I will yet for this be inquired by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like Fox. Flocks. In other words, he said, if you will be, if you will inquire me of these words and say, Lord, you said, you said, you said, he said, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together that you would be justified. Amen. He wants us to plead with him and, and put him on account and say, Lord, this is what I see in here. Show me, talk to me, speak to me. And then it goes on to say, thus says the Lord, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel a house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. And as the holy flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled again. Amen. With the flocks of men and they shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. So this was for me for 15 years ago, 11 years ago. Amen. And I tucked it in, I took it, I, spake, I spoke it, I declared it. God doesn't forget it, amen. We forget, that's why we have to go back and look at our journals and see, you know, what God said and what year God gave us this. And, and Cat, Pastor Kevin and I have just been re, uh, remodifying our, um, our, our years. We get gone back and, you know, when we did this and when we did that and, and so even in a, a situation where we lost things and we moved to an, a new situation, uh, moved back here with no money and, and that, those sorts of things, God said, I want you to start to plant. I want you to plant. I want you to plant in the lives of these young women. He didn't ask me to provide. He just asked me to 
to be obedient. And I'll never forget the, the woman meeting with that woman and her giving me that check to, as I had been seeking God. I didn't know where it was going to come. I didn't know. Uh, she's a very much a sower of seed and, and I didn't know where it was going to come from. Amen. But the Lord said, you go and keep doing. And, and through this famine, through the years, I didn't stop doing any of the, the, Sabbaths, if you want to call them, the things that God spoke to me to do. He called, told me to do the love lunches. He told me to do um, the come aways in August. And then he, when we came back, he started me doing the uh, made arise for the young girls in October. And so I continued. Uh, that's just the personal things that God's given me uh, to do um, that are, you know, like, not just uh, for countryside, I mean, excuse me, um, Covenant Christian Center. These are, these are outworkings that involve other churches and, and those, those types of events. Uh, in addition, we, of course, do Sunday, Wednesday. We do Monday morning. We do the other things. Amen. So, but God was saying, even in loss, I need you to move forward and start to sow more seed. In the season of famine, we repented countless times. Of, of things, anything that came to us. When we found a scripture, like when Job prayed for his friends, we found people that we could pray for because we knew that we had we had to find seed to sow. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe you have plenty of monetary seed, but God's not always interested in monetary seed because when you drop that $10 or that $100,000, when you do it, it's got to cost you something. It's got, you've got to, it's got to, you've, he wants a character change in you. And so sometimes popping a check down or doing that is not really what he re needs of you. He needs a character change. He wants you to walk in unity. He wants you to, to uh, love better, love the body of Christ better, uh, forgive people, know how to, in at this hour, how to love the uh, most extremely um, un unlovable people but how we walk in this hour to love them. And so when you go through those seasons where God deals with you and a lot of that other stuff is cut off and you can't go there. I mean, like I joke, I went from the Bentley to the bike. You know, I had no transportation for a, a long time. Uh, you know, I was had borrowed the car, you know, my husband's car or whatever. But, but you know, my car was, but the one car was possessed and deep, <laughs> not possessed, but repossessed. <laughs> Maybe because it was possessed, but anyway, it got possessed. That was a horrible thing. I'd never had that happen. So there are all these things where when we read Ezekiel 36 that they had right and they they said things and, and people didn't care to hear from us anymore. And, and the people that used to be part of the church now that we didn't provide for the, you know, for whatever reason they were gone. But again, through it all, we clung to the rock. Amen. That was higher and is higher than I am. And it's higher than you. And so I encourage you, maybe Ezekiel, this doesn't mean anything to you, but there are so many promises in here of restoration for yourself, for your home, for your family, for your nation. And I know that we are going to see this nation restored, even if it goes, to, if you, even, even if it goes through a, a, a time of famine, God will use those situations to bring healing because he's not going to do without us. Amen. Because he loves us. He, he that did not withhold his very best in Christ Jesus. He didn't hold back anything. He, didn't, he, he who did not withhold his very best. Jesus Christ, his only son, will he not with him Give us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He will. I know he will. Thank you for being with me today, for, for staying on and, and hearing. And, and, and again, uh, I encourage you to start to, to journal. It doesn't have, you don't have to sit for two hours and write. Just, but keep track of where, where you go, what you do. I don't like it on the computer. I don't 
I don't know. I just still, maybe old school. I want to know that I can go to that. And I can see pictures of visions that he's given me to draw. I can never sketch. Now, some of you are that savvy on the computer that you can sketch them on there and keep them there. But I, I, I just like to see my handwriting. I have, you know, just as a dream here, you know, another dream, you know, um, showing me an enlargement. I, I look at what God's doing, uh, I like to look back, a backward glance to see the shift. And I see that there were shifts that as I look back for the last couple of years that God was showing me, I'm shifting you to do something different. And I want you to move in that shift. So uh, I, I trust that uh, God is showing you new uh, new areas that he wants to send you to. He wants us to go to those people that are lost and dying. And, you know, there's a lot of lost and dying people right in the church. But there's a lot, too, that have not even been searching for him. That when you show up, the light that is on you, they will sense that. You know, I was somewhere the other day. And I could tell there's a lot of people that were there that were Christians, but who, what I represented and who we represented was, was too, too, a little too crazy, you know, a little too much on fire. And, um, and that's going to be more and more in this hour. But as, as, as God spoke to Ezekiel, that though they hear you and though they obey you, you know, and though they're, they're black briars and thorns towards you, yet when you leave, they will know that a prophet has been among them, a person that was sent to bring correction and to bring life. And you know, prophecy, this prophecy now, New Testament prophecy is for exhortation, comfort, and, you know, and to not to foretell because we should, as New Testament believers, the Lord should be showing us through his word, through the Holy Spirit's direction, through um, our relationship, he should be. We, we now have the right as kings and priests to go into the Holy of Holies to get answers, to get direction from the Holy Spirit, you know, from the Father ourselves because the way has been made through the veil, the veil was torn. And so it isn't like Old Testament. I shouldn't be looking and following Elijah lists, though some of you do that. I don't follow any of those lists. I follow the Holy Spirit and I read the word and I want to see from him. I have too many things going on around me that I, that I just can't spend. There's only so many hours in the day. And if I'm going to spend an hour, let it be in the word of God. That is, it is infallible. Amen. That is able for reproof doctrine that I could be made perfect. That's what the, it says in, what is it? Uh, Timothy, that the word of God is Let's just read it. Let me get over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we'll close with this. And, and, and again, I, uh, I just, there's only so many hours in the day that we can't, um, it's just impossible for us to, uh, can, you know, for us to uh, keep up with all the news. And, you know, there's only so many hours of day we've got to keep uh, our, um, you know, our tension on the right things in here. Let's see here. And I should know right where it is. I've got so much of this highlighted. Hallelujah. Uh, but I want to give it to you before we leave, before we go off here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, first and second Timothy is just so good. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Uh, I just want to make sure I just don't say it wrong here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, here it is. Uh, it is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16. It says, thank you, Lord. We just thank you for your word, your living word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable to help. It was to help us. Profitable for doctrine. Profitable for reproof. Profitable for correction. Profitable for instruction in righteousness. Amen. 
that the man or woman of God may be perfect, whole, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So I trust, I trust this word. I trust this word is more than enough if we could just get it and take it in and digest it and meditate and let it, it see this word is like a, a pill when you put it in. You, it's a little pill and you digest it and sometimes you, yeah, okay, I took it. But then it, when you take, take it, when you put it in, it is able to change you. And you may not even understand what it's doing, but it is like medicine. Amen. It does something. It goes between the bone and flesh, Hebrews 4 says. It is a, a, a discerner of the heart, the intents of the heart. Amen. And so it will, it will, it will rearrange you when you're going this way. It'll say, no, I want you to go this way. Amen. He gave me a dream last night. It was a, a and I'm still praying about it. It was an odd, unusual dream, but, but God's speaking to me about how to walk in, in the healing anointing to the world in this hour. Amen. And so there's a lot of people they don't believe that God is still in the healing business, but it was for him. He was showing me, and there's I've got to I've got to study it now. And I'll just say, okay, I'll, give me another dream. No, I've got to be faithful. Just like you know, I, I I'm gonna go back and look at things that he spoke to me before because if I just go back to what he's given me through studying the word and visions and fulfill those. I'll be in the right place. Amen. I don't need another prophecy. I don't need another prophetic word. I don't need to follow this. Come back to Jesus. Come back to fellowship around the word of God. Please. Uh, he's so faithful over his word. And um, so thank you for being with me. I love you. And God bless you. And I'll be back with you. I, I believe I'll be back with you tomorrow. Um, we're going to be going out of town, so I'll we'll see if I can get reception when we get there. But tomorrow uh, we'll be talking about the dry bones, about Ezekiel 37, and prophesying to the dry bones. And so it really parallels with what I was talking about in uh, Ezekiel 36 today. But it you've got to get it in your mouth, and you've got to speak it out. You've got to declare it. You've got to make record of it. You've got to, you know, just like I have here in the front of, of, of uh, my book for uh, the, my journal, I've got in here, where is it? <laughs> no, I lost it. <laughs> it. I've got the verse of, of Psalm 126 for me for this year. And so, uh, again, I go back through that and I'm looking at, I'm expecting, God, you gave it to me for this year. I'm expecting to sh see my sheaves. Hallelujah. Because I have gone forth bearing precious seed. Amen. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. Love you in the Lord. And if we can pray for you about anything specific over your field, over where you're going, you know that you can reach out to us and, and, and we'll pray for you. Thank you for being with me this, this afternoon. God bless you and have a Jesus-filled day. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless.